can I trust a broker? I'd, I'd say, look, if, if you are authorized to uh, be an operating broker dealer here on the PSE, the answer should be yes. Why? Because uh, the SEC and we actually on an annual basis requalify uh, brokers uh, to operate. So there are many levels of, uh, how do I call it, uh, yes. checklist if you will. One is their capitalization levels. And mm -hmm. in fact, just to let you know, we increased capitalization levels last year by 50%. So like the banking system, mm -hmm. uh, I think broker dealers that are allowed to operate right now are a lot uh, more should, stable. Than yeah, should be even liquid enough also. Yeah, so one, you have that uh, level of uh, uh, what call a buffer. I think number two, uh, all the broker dealers are also now being overseen from a behavioral standpoint by something called the uh, Capital Markets Integrity Corporation. So uh, I don't know if you were following yes. when we launched that, right? So, so clearly now you have uh, real-time surveillance uh, of uh, broker-dealer trades and behavior uh, that's linked to our trading engine. So what that means is that if, if they were trying to do something funny, <laughs> then, uh, at least from the regulatory perspective, we will be given at least a yellow flag or a orange flag, whatever it is, to at least uh, review their behavior. Right? I, I think uh, uh, maybe the third item is that in financial services, um, like in well, like in all financial services, uh, this business is a business of trust. Mm -hmm. So. Broker dealers who violate that trust typically, uh, it's not just one transaction that gets, uh, you know, them on the bad side. The, the issue is it usually, uh, uh, it probably can destroy their business. So there's a, not a very good incentive for brokers to misbehave, right? Some some do, of course. I guess we've had one or two cases, as you know, but uh, the issue is there's a lot of disincentive for financial service providers, including our broker dealers, to behave properly. <laughs> so what do, uh, okay, after I engage my, a broker and then, uh, um, what do I expect my broker to do for me? Uh, well, uh, I guess uh, first of all you have to check which type of broker you are you're actually engaging with. Uh, one is, I guess, uh, what you might call the full service uh, uh, broker. The other type on uh, maybe like your city site online, which is, uh, let, let's call it more automated uh, slash, uh, you might even call them, in the US are referred to as discount brokers, right? Because uh, the latter tends not to actually give uh, advice. Uh, everything is kind of off the, internet or, or they have a website which has all the information and you make your own decisions and you basically enter it on your computer and you kind of uh, enter your trade so that's probably the scaled down model but you have all the information that mm -hmm. you decide for yourself right the full service model usually you can talk to your broker and ask for advice ask for advice uh, usually uh, they should be helpful in terms of trying to help you design your investment scheme your what type of risk you should be taking and uh, of course uh, some of them will also advise you on what are the likely growth uh, uh, prospects for uh, particular stocks right so those type of brokers and then of course some also have actual research on mm -hmm. specific names so working on that work so if i'm a beginner is it more uh, prudent to have the full service because i do not have the sophistication to do all this research and you know it, it depends uh, you know there are a lot of uh, say uh, let's call it information savvy investors even if you're a beginner you know, put it this way uh, when I say information savvy these are guys uh, who probably work with a computer already uh, and know how to access information and uh, and you know, you, you probably will come to the same conclusion uh, if you do the same, probably enough self-started homework by saying, okay, uh, 
I'm gonna buy slowly, <laughs> gonna put in, buy a few stocks, and if that's your conclusion, that's probably not a different conclusion from what a full service broker would uh, would tell you. Um, but if you're the type who feels that uh, it's better to talk to somebody before you actually make a decision, it's kind of like uh, uh, sometimes even in your uh, commercial bank, right? when you open up your savings and checking the deposit, sometimes it's easier to talk to the account officer who will say, open up the CD uh -huh. versus the three-year CD versus the six-month CD because blah, blah, blah even though you can make that same decision. So in that case, then you're probably better off talking to a full service uh, broker. So in a way, it's determined by your personality type. Mm, okay.